I lost my job and my husband wound up dying of colon cancer. One day I went to the store and when I came home, I had a lock on my door and that's when Adult Protective Services stepped in and put me into Elm York. Otherwise it would have been the street or a shelter and I don't like shelters. I'd like to move to my own apartment. I've had enough of facility life. The future does not look bright here because we're getting rougher people. My first thing I wanted to know when I got there was when can I leave? This case arose following a series of New York Times articles that profiled the egregious conditions that the residents of adult homes were living in in New York City. I think one flew over the cuckoo's nest. No ability to get out into the community, high mortality rate, no independence. There were people there that pulling knives on other people. I wanted to learn how to take my own medications, which I knew how to do years ago. I want to do my own cooking, my own cleaning, my own laundry, my own life. Federal laws mandate that folks with disabilities not be segregated and be given as much independence as possible in living their lives with dignity. So we had fought this case for almost a decade. We had won a trial. We went to the appeals court. The appeals court had reversed, and it looked like it was going to be another 10 years at that moment in time. The state was not willing to really move forward, so we filed this case as a class action this time. Nelpi, along with various co-counsel agencies, began building relationships with adult home residents there are human beings behind this case. We managed to register over 120 adult home residents to testify. Folks were able to tell the world what they've been living with. I would like to be independent from the remaining years of my life and die in peace. Just try to be happy and normal as the rest of the world does. I have no friends and no family. I want to get a chance to be independent. I'm not stupid and I'm not retarded. I have kids. I can't take them where I live. Let me have my life back. Judge Garifuss said it, this is taking way too long. It's time for us to, you know, to fix it. What would have given you the chills is to see the reaction that some of these residents had when they found out they had won this case. One of our named plaintiffs read a poem about how important it was to be living on her own. I'm finally free to live my life and feel what I feel. Free to feel elation. Realizing life is a celebration. This place is my home, my haven, my shrine. Most of all, this place is mine. I will be able to practice a lot more and focus on getting the GED when I get the one bedroom apartment. I would like to live in Woodside, Corona, not in Flushing, to have these different options I can look forward to. They believe I could do it. They have faith in me. I just can't wait to have them say, okay, you have your apartment now. The anticipation of it, it's really exciting. It was the most important case. I had ever worked on. These are relationships that I will I really treasure in my heart for the rest of my life. It was an incredibly cold day, and as soon as we walked uh, outside, I knew it was uh, a little too late to get downtown. We ended up at North Central Bronx Hospital. My baby was delivered by a midwife. They were my champions. I actually got to walk home with my son. If the maternity ward hadn't been there, I would have given birth in an emergency room, given that that is really the only space that we have here in the community. When I found out the ward was gonna close, it was really surprising.
The Health and Hospitals Corporation suspended labor and delivery services at North Central Bronx Hospital. There are no other maternity services in this particular area. This was an award-winning service. They had the lowest C-section rates in the city at one point. The basic duty of a healthcare system is to first make it possible to create life. To have that removed just struck me as wrong. Following the closure, we organized press conferences and began to bring in community partners. We held rallies and protests outside of the hospital. Their answers have not sufficed to us. We can't just do this with just one or two organizations. We needed a lot of people. We had many mothers confront the hospital. As a community, we are not being engaged in the process. We spent every weekend in the neighborhood park getting people to sign petitions. The healthcare system is changing for people of color, for immigrant communities. This part of the Bronx has a lot of immigrants that don't even know the language. As soon as we handed out flyers, they got the message. Just seeing these angry mothers and their children chanting along struck a chord. That really showed me how much this hospital meant to the people of this community. Keep the pressure up, keep the media involved, keep mothers involved, just keep pushing. The major win was when Richie Torres secured $600,000 for this unit. It held the corporation accountable to bringing the service back. But I feel it was the community that created the momentum that led to this moment. So this moment, first and foremost, belongs to you. Yeah, it was amazing. We won. Like, when do you win? We loved this place. They do good work here. Okay. We were hugging people from the hospital who we had initially confronted. People were crying. The midwife who was with me as I was in labor with this guy was there and she got her job back. We really had a uh, coming together. You did a phenomenal job. You really did. Thank you so much. What do you have if you don't have your health? What do you have? Our communities define our work. We know that those closest to the problems are closest to the solutions. One of the things we're really proud about at New York Lawyers is the way in which we partner with the private bar. The adult homes case required a partnership with a law firm like Paul Weiss to really make it happen. The reward you get is quite personal. You are helping real people achieve real goals. It is about life. It is about liberty. Our impact in the last year alone. More than 3,800 New Yorkers with mental illness will live independently with the services they need to succeed in the community. Thousands of women in the North Central Bronx can now access safe, quality maternity care at their local hospital. 60,000 Brentwood residents are directing the removal of 50,000 tons of toxic debris that were illegally dumped in their community park. More than 500,000 eligible New Yorkers will have access to health insurance in a language they understand. Major law firms donated more than 16,000 pro bono hours to strengthen the capacity of over 430 nonprofits serving thousands of people across New York City. We punch far above our weight by leveraging lobbying, litigation, legislation, community organizing. We fight for a more just New York.